Thank you, Mary, for being here and bringing awareness to this really important child safety issue, Baby Heat Stroke. Uh, I started this nonprofit organization called Baby Heat Stroke three years ago, and I help parents and caregivers not to forget their child in the back seat. So I created this hand tab, and you can put it on the rear view mirror of your car. So just to remind parents and caregivers um, to check before they leave the car. And if I may add some facts to the viewers, um, in 2016, there have been five deaths, and five deaths in Florida, but in total throughout the country, there have been 39. And in 2017, there have been two deaths in Florida, one in Tampa and one like a couple miles from here in Pinecrest. And I, I want to prevent these deaths. Um, for example, there was this one little boy, his name was Sam, and he passed away in Pinecrest by just being left in the backseat of a car. And also another boy by Jacob Manchego, a two-year-old boy, his sister was going to work and then simply forgot and left him in the back seat. And they passed away just from so much heat exposure. And I have some statistics too. So if it's 80 degrees outside of the car, um, the temperature can increase dramatically in over just a couple minutes. So after 10 minutes, it can go to 99 degrees. And after 20 minutes, it can go to 109 degrees which you can see it's already increasing. So a baby's temperature at 107 degrees, their vital organs start, start to drop and they start dying away. And this is the beginning of a, of a heat stroke. And they're no longer perspiring and in just a couple minutes, they'll, they'll die. So Mayor, I'd like to ask you now a couple of questions. So, in Florida, we have the Good Samaritan Law, where the first thing you can do is, is call 911, or the second thing you can do is break the window. Do you think this is effective? Do you think this is a good idea? I think it's just uh, a small cure for a huge problem. Uh, it doesn't solve uh, the, the end, because at the end, most likely, uh, the child will die. Uh, it, it has to be uh, a person that recognizes that this is happening just uh, as the person walk away and they couldn't find the person. And then I personally, I would break the window. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care, yeah. uh, you know, about the damages uh, and all that. Uh, if you call 911, uh, I can guarantee you that a rescue truck will be there within five to six minutes. That's the response time. However, five minutes could be the difference between life and death. So, uh, you know, the Good Samaritan, yes, you will, you will immediately call 911, but from the minute that, for instance, in the city of Miami, our communication bridge received the call and start talking to uh, the person, start asking for the address. That, uh, that communications person is working on the computer, sending the message to the nearest uh, fire station, which in turn will uh, sound an alarm which in turn, three paramedics will get on a rescue, which they will drive with sirens on because they know that this is an emergency. Uh, but uh, they will get there uh, between five to six minutes. Hopefully, they would uh, not encounter uh, gridlock in traffic uh, because if they do, they have to call the police so the police will open uh, a way for them. So that would make uh, another minute or two minutes. Uh, you know, if we're talking of of a person that you know, an adult that is in this situation, uh, probably they might get there uh, and save a life. 
But the law of probability says that when you have a small child, like you said, uh, it, it's, it's very difficult. So we need an, a stronger status statute uh, that would uh, create a law whereby law enforcement uh, can act immediately by probably most likely arresting the person and then you investigate. Uh, and, and, and that's parallel to rescue taking care of the victim. Uh, but why the law is necessary? Uh, because it would remind people that uh, they would go to jail if they're careless. It's no longer an accident. It's, it's a second degree homicide. Uh, so it's manslaughter. So, so you know, uh, I, I, think, um, I think that's why I commend you because this awareness campaign gave us elected official the data that we know and, and hopefully there will be a law and hopefully different cities will support this law and hopefully the, the people would understand uh, that, you know, I, I, if, if with this law you can save one life, one single life, uh, you did great. That makes the best difference. It, it, I mean, you just saved the life of a child who could be anything. But if they die, we would never know. Right. Thank you, Mayor. And do you think the law for leaving kids unattended should be therefore enforced? Uh, absolutely. There is, the law is very gray, you know, because you may say, well, it was an accident. Uh, you know, I made a mistake. Uh, I, I, I was rushing because I was buying groceries for my kids. So, I mean, if you get caught into a bar uh, and, and you were drinking and your child is there, well, you go to jail immediately. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, there is this gray area that, oh, I am so sorry. That's your excuse. You know, uh, I didn't know. That's why that is your excuse. So, so I think, I think that yes, laws should be enforced. But you need to have a law that doesn't have gray area. You need to have a law that whether you you forgot, you cannot say I'm sorry. You just, you know, if like uh, if you kill a person, you're supposed to. You're driving, you kill a person, you're supposed to stay there. You cannot just leave because you were nervous or you were in a hurry. Uh, if you leave, that's a, that's a felony add to your uh, careless driving. So it, it, it is not the same. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, the laws that we have now in the books uh, are not good enough. So we need something that's more impactful and that they won't make any more mistakes. Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, laws send messages. You know, you're, you're not supposed to uh, steal things because, you know, your family taught you not to steal things. But if you steal things, you go to jail. And it doesn't matter if you need that thing. You go to jail. So, so the law has been kind of lenient in, in saying, well, you know, okay, uh, you're going to be charged, uh, but then there are circumstances. You know, you were, you, you were taking pills or you forgot and you, or you thought that your husband uh, took the kid and uh, you, he didn't do it. Uh, so it has to be, uh, it has to be a very detailed. So, 
So law enforcement can enforce and the state attorney then can file charges. And then you have to go to court and you will go to jail. Mandatory. I don't think that the that the law uh, is really a strict in saying, you know, if that happened, it's a minimum five years. You know, you discharge a weapon, minimum five years. No question. You know. Thank you. I agree. And let's say I was at the shopping center and I found a child in a car. Should I first call 911? Should I get the manager or should I get someone nearby that can help me break the window? What should I do first? You know, it's... It's about saving a life. Uh, I mean, it, what what would it take to save a life? Uh, it it it's one person's uh, decision. I want to say that if uh, if someone's window is broken and the child is safe, that person is not going to file charges against you. Mm -hmm. You know. So it, it's about, but you know, uh, especially here in Florida, what is the first thing that people do when they get on the car? They don't, they don't put the radio on, they put the air condition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, you know, uh, we adults, I can't stand this heat, you know, we put the air condition. So imagine a little baby uh, with, with inside a car, like you say, temperatures that are unbearable, you know. Right, so different from a child and an adult. adult. Right, uh, an adult will just open the door, kick, kick the door. Imagine, imagine a child on a child's seat, it's nothing that this child can do right. just they can't open the door. They can't just take just the maybe cry and maybe die mm -hmm. you know that's all they can do exactly and also I have an expression or a catchphrase I I say look before you lock do you have an expression that you can create that you can you can tell to teenagers children adults just something that would stand out like an expression that you can create don't forget the baby. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> because if you forget that baby, uh, the baby is gone. You know. And this is kind of a difficult question, but do you have some ideas um, that you can help parents to 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 remember not to forget their child in the back seat? Something that they just won't forget their child. I think that. If you have an awareness campaign combined with a law that you know uh, it's going to be harsh, you know you will never forget. I mean, it's. Mm. Let me get if, uh, if if you if you are in a car and you're going to do an errand, you won't leave your purse in the passenger's seat because you think that somebody's going to steal it. So, because you know that may be crime. So, so you, you just need to, to know that there is a law that you will be punished no matter what are the circumstances, you know. And, and, and that's why, that's why the, it's, it's the only way to remind <coughs> the public awareness it's important. I mean, uh, here in Florida, I mean, we have public awareness campaign. Don't, don't leave your child unattended near a pool mm -hmm. because they might die, and they do. Uh, so, so you know, I think it's, it's, it has to be a combined effort: public awareness, strict law you know, a campaign that people really know 
that there is that there is consequence for for that i agree so to have many steps take many impactful steps that parents caregivers won't forget their child in the back seat right i agree and there's a story a personal story that i know of of a, of a small little boy a little child that was actually left in the back seat and his parents they were going to church and when they came back an hour later they they found him but the most disturbing thing was that there were actually bite marks all over his arms just he was trying to to cope with the pain he was he was alone he was abandoned and that's why I've created baby heat stroke that's why I've created so so much awareness I'm trying to spread the word through my website through my Facebook um, for parents not to forget their child in the back seat so I, I'd like to ask you a really important question um, if one day out of the year we could create baby heat stroke awareness day and um, we can have a concert we can get musicians um, I'd love to get people from my school they would be so excited to join what do you think about that I think um, municipal governments, county governments, state governments are obligated uh, to do things for the community. You know, as we uh, as we uh, proclaim Cancer Awareness Day or AIDS Awareness Day or uh, you know Autism Awareness Day. Uh, cities should do that because this is this is an ongoing problem, and and this is this is something that kills people, and 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 especially, uh, you know, the the weakest of the weak, which is a baby, has no way in defending himself or herself. It's hard you know, to hear little boys. it's what kind of what can a baby do? The baby are the most vulnerable uh, link in the society because they don't have ways to uh, defend themselves. So I think yes, and uh, I, I will commit to you uh, that we will uh, proclaim a day as baby is struck day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor, for everything. And thank you for being here. It was it was fun. I had fun with you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for your leadership in Miami. Uh, let's go impact the community. We thank will. You. <laughs>